We start with a story from 10,000 years ago. There was a civil war in the Chimerian Kingdom. Family fighting family is never a good idea, and so a piece of armor, a cuirass, was made to empower one side so that they could defend themselves against the attacking force. And obviously, a piece of armor needs a blacksmith, and that blacksmith was... their mom. Well, I say mom, it looks more like their gran. I think you'll find all blacksmiths are women of this age, especially because they're physically capable of doing this. People to force his brother to abdicate his throne. You know, watching that I can only come to one conclusion. We need more women in STEM. But her and her army have definitely existed female blacksmiths, maids in a new cuirass. Forged for her son, Thule, a cuirass of pure chromium. Dude, I know you're desperate, but I don't know how the Google browser's gonna save your life. Quick, someone look up how to sword fight! I know I'm gonna lose the battle, but at least before that, I get access to an infinite amount of free paw. So he puts on the armor, which actually does look like it was made by a 65-year-old woman. Then, she assembled the Lux Arcana. Oh, what's the Lux Arcana? That sounds really impressive. I'm sure it's not just an overcomplicated name for an incredibly simple thing. A magical key that activated the enchanted armor. It's a key. Why are you coming up with incredibly complicated names for something which is stupidly simple? What are you, a medical textbook. So it would only serve he who was worthy of its awesome power. That doesn't make any sense. Does the armor work for someone that's got the key or someone who's worthy of it? Because surely you're not just worthy of the armor because you have the key. I have a key to this house, but I'd never describe myself as being, I am worthy of that house, thank you. The armor can't judge you to begin with. Tell you what, that is one ugly piece of armor though, isn't it? The rightful king of Chimeria rode out of the city gates to meet his tyrant brother and 2,000 death dealers. Hang on, death dealers? Didn't you have something like this from the first episode? Death dogs. So we've got death dealers and death dogs. I appreciate how descriptive your names are. You always know what's coming. It is a little bit on the nose though, isn't it? For a supposedly creative fantasy world. You call the soldiers that kill you death dealers, but a key is the luminous arcana. Priorities. But I did at least appreciate this story. It was beginning to get good. Oh, there's a guy who's at war with his brother and he's riding out alone to fight 2,000 people. This is going to be an incredible battle scene. I can't wait to see it. Let's hope nothing ruins it. This is really fascinating. I can tell they don't call you Boar Man for nothing. Yeah, she had to go and ruin it, didn't she? I'm gonna just ask, has there been a time where she's ever opened her mouth and made a scene better? Because right now I'm here with Borman. It's like, oh, she's talking again. Could you just tell me about my father? I don't know if you're paying attention, love, but he was. Your father goes missing looking for a piece of armor, so he starts describing the armor to you. I don't feel like this story's gone on very long. Can you tell me about astrophysics? Well, stars are made up of- No, I want to know about astrophysics. Yes, I I don't know if you realize, but stars are pretty important to it. Maybe he's trying to let you down gently that your father didn't leave you because you're an insufferable prat like I think, but because he actually went off to do something good for the world. Because quite frankly, at this point, I'd leave you if someone offered me a Mars bar. Screw going out for a pint of milk, I'd bribe someone with a pint of milk to leave. Well, I'm trying to, but you keep... Thank you! I'm pretty sure this world will invent gaffer tape just to shut her up. Okay, well, can you make it short? I'm sorry, but I don't know how Azuma becomes this insufferable in a world where their attention span hasn't been destroyed by TikTok. I'm sure you've got a packed schedule, but it does look like you're just sitting by a tree and then gonna walk through a forest. I think you've got the time to spare. Oh no, I've gotta be at work at nine. Your generation has like zero attention span. How does that even make sense in this fantasy world that doesn't have social media and computers? These are not people which have been raised in this environment. They are literally Zoomers from our world implanted into Willow and it doesn't make any sense. Why would you have zero attention span? I love Tails, okay? There are times in reviews I'm like, I wonder if I've been too harsh on a character, but no, they always just prove me right. Never ignore a red flag. Crown, Gales, the worm. Everyone's got a scary name. Death dogs. If it's not scary, just put the word death in front of it. That'll that'll work. They all mean the same thing. It's the darkness. The swallows. Oi. You didn't just interrupt the story as it was getting interesting again, did you? I'm about to tell you vital information about your father. Oi! Okay, I don't care about it anymore. Let's just carry on with the story. Where's Elora? We're literally just gonna leave it there. Next scene, please. I know you were talking about the father that left me as a child, but I just don't care anymore because someone said, Oi! Seriously? Throw a leash on that shit already. I mean, I would, but after the start of this episode, I still say inventing gaffer tape's more important. Spread out. Could have gone far. So they spread out, going off in different directions from the campfire. Let's not forget that because the scriptwriter did. We cut to the evil guard carrying Alora away because nobody thought that the most important person in the realm needed a bodyguard. We see them searching and these three people decide to walk right next to each other. It's not the best way to search 360 degrees, splitting up into two groups and going in two different directions. <laughs> Feel like you miss a lot of space. There's the second group. Okay, three groups. Kit's on her own, which is understandable as they've met her. Kit's the only person that did the sensible thing and went back to Elora's last known location. <laughs> of course, while she's there, she finds the magic tree she grew and realizes, oh crap, it's actually Elora. Um, that's really? 
Yeah, it's understandable that you're pissed off when you find confirmation that someone is literally the sorceress that will save your world. You know, it's a tough decision. On the one hand, they'll save the universe. On the other hand, they really do take attention from you. And without her precious attention, she'll just shrivel up and die. So the evil guard is tying her to a horse when he gets spotted by Stable Girl. What are you doing? Tying Alora to a horse. What does it look like he's doing? Orders from the queen. I'm taking her back. It's a good thing to say because it's actually true. She did ask him to do it. But what options does she have? How can her cunning wit make him slip up? Wait, hold on. Oh, that's clever. You know who she is. How did you even get that from it? Wait, hold on. My brain's too slow to actually process what you've just said. <gasps> You know a Laura Dunham's the person to save the universe. How do you get those two pieces of information even linked? And you know why I can't run? Oh, well, now you've really given the game away. I just want it forever remembered that the evil spy in a deep undercover position was revealed by this intellect. I'm taking her back. Wait, hold on. I can see why the knight made an exception for you. And you know why I can't run? Oh. What was that? Just keep coming out with zingers, don't you? Oh, I don't know what you are, even though you're speaking to me in a demonic voice. What's wrong with you? That's a question I've asked myself about everyone in the show. You're gonna have to be more specific, love, I'm honest. You're not yourself. You need help. Willow can- Don't make me kill you. I'm not sure those are related either. Look, you need help. I'll kill you! They're trying to have him where he's fighting the magic and he's like, please just shut up and go away so I don't have to draw my sword. But there are so many better ways you could have shown it. Even if you had to show it in a cliche way, it still would have been better than this. But they both draw their swords. And just when you think you're about to get a 1v1 sword fight, maybe the only ginger in the show is about to get yeeted. No, unfortunately, we're not going to get that. Stop! Yep, this is the plot all appearing. For some reason, Willow, who is in an entirely different group, going off in an entirely different direction, also somehow ends up at the same place. Remember, they split off into three groups, and uh, he shouldn't be alone, unless he split up again. In which case, it'd be even more stupid if the other guy arrived, wouldn't it? Commander Valentine says he's here on orders from Sorsha to take Alora back to Tirislein. That's what you decide to tell him? Not the bit where he spoke at you in a demonic voice and then threatened to murder you? He's possessed should just be a bit higher on that list of priorities, don't you think? Mm, is that so? It's not up to the Queen to decide anymore anyway. Yeah, but if she told you about the demonic voice, you might have had a different opinion, mate. It's up to Alora, and it doesn't look like you asked her. That'd all be fine in our world, but you are forgetting that in this realm, She's a queen, and she's the subject of the queen, so actually, it is the queen's opinion that matters more. Oh, hello. Another person's turned up. Kit, who is in an entirely different group, walking in an entirely different direction. I know all roads lead to Rome, but he does not like the Colosseum to me, love. Valentine. Princess. How did he get here? There's just another one. When did this dude turn up? He's just walked into the camera as if we were meant to know he was there all along. We've never seen him here before. They framed it with him and Kit as if they were in the same group. No, she was off on her own and he was with the other guys. Oh, there he is. I mean, at least he was with Willow, but I don't know why he's just appeared now. I thought maybe he was lurking in the background to get the element of surprise, but he's like, no, I'm just going to show myself now with my little bottle knives. Hold on. Oh, come on. Now you're just taking the piss. Not only did they all go off in different directions, but they're all appearing from different directions as well. <laughs> but quick out here. Evil guy's got his sword out. Borman's got his sword out. Stable hand has a sword out. Stay out of this, Borman. I can't. Back in your scabbards, boys. What about the stable hand? Kit just walks up. You two, you can piss off. We don't need your help. Go on, miss. If you'd like to do the honours against the guard, after I've just told the guard to put his sword away, that'll be fine. It doesn't work, but it's not meant to. She's not trying to de-escalate anything. She's just going, oh, men and their egos. When will they ever learn? I have to take her. Oh, I want you to. I really do. Now you know how the audience feels about you. Maybe we should discuss this first. All of these discussions are completely irrelevant if the ginger goes, he spoke to me in a possessed demonic voice. We're just going to keep that to ourselves. Not important, no. He doesn't serve Tira's lean anymore. How do you know that? You weren't even told. He didn't even do anything suspicious in front of you. Give a mule soft, wispy bit who he serves. She's with us and he's outnumbered. Five to one. Do you count as a whole? Be better if we do halves. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to contribute here, Silas. Four and a half to one. To be fair, he's not who we meant, but I'm glad we agree we can do halves. Who said I'm wrong? See? See? Another reaction should be, <gasps> he's just done a mnemonic voice because none of them have heard it before. Let's see if they're shocked. No one's shocked at all that the guy in front of you that you've known since birth is speaking at you with a demonic voice. No, straight face. I always expected that. People are always doing it to me. Although in Kit's case, maybe people do do it a lot. Because if anything is going to drive you to the dark side, it's putting up with Kit. But Borman suddenly realizes, oh, there's been a guy in full plate armor sneaking up on me this entire time. It's a shame he's never played D&D. Would have known that actually plate is quite difficult to sneak in, you idiot. But he turns around and sees the soldier behind him. And rather than turning around to meet the guy, he does this. 
Yeah, that's him blocking the sword over his shoulder. <laughs> I mean, I could have turned and blocked it with my full force, but I thought, nah, this'll be impressive. Renowned for having a lot of leverage and muscle power, you know, when your arm's in this position, isn't it? But instantaneously, it's no longer one guy in plate. Now there's two of them. This guy's in the middle of everybody. How did they sneak up on you and why did no one see him? <laughs> but they all have a fight. Stable Girl fights the main guard. She runs away and stands in the nearby vicinity of a tree. It is obvious at this point that she's nowhere near the tree, but you know, we might as well continue to swing anyway. <laughs> that way we can use our CGI. But Coward Face doesn't want to fight, so he runs to Willow. Free her. Me. Are you sure I'm qualified for something? What's that doing? I mean, at least someone screamed at him to do something. It's the only thing he's going to contribute to the series. So he runs to her entire Laura. The fight continues. And Kit just starts getting battered. She's not even fighting the main guard and she's still getting defeated. The funny thing is, it's one of the most realistic parts of the show. Because she doesn't get defeated because she's a bad sword fighter. He just overpowers her. <laughs> It's just the force of his swing is way more powerful than what she can deflect. But we'll probably say it's because she's not as good at sword fighting as she thinks and not because she weighs half his weight. After all, who cares about physics? What are you doing? A diversion. Yeah, Willow's over here, bearing in mind he's a sorcerer, creating a diversion. You're already untying a lore off a horse. Do you think it's going to allow you to get away on foot through a forest? They'll just follow you. What is even your plan here? So he starts mixing things together. He's still trying to untie a Laura, but he can't because he's crap at everything. I'm rescuing you. There's no one else available. That's a good point, love. My next question would be, do you not even have a knife to cut the ropes with, you fool? I know you're not a sword fighter, but your camping, a general purpose knife, would just be something everybody has on them. It's useful. But she starts panicking and is about to die. But just as he's about to swing down and finish her, we get this. No, I'm no sword fighter, but I doubt you have much strength when your arm is outstretched like that. And he's coming down in an overhead swing. You know what happened here? He's going to drive your blade down on top of her and cut her in half. Now, apparently, she could just stop it. Her arm doesn't even move a centimeter. She's got to be one of the strongest people in the realm. No wonder the knights made an exception for her. But a guard comes up and starts attacking Mr. Latte, who draws his sword. Sword would have been pretty useful in cutting Laura's ropes. No, turn your brain off. It'll be fine. Little dude stabs him in the back. <laughs> And then Willow has come up with this distraction and throws it. Smoke appears everywhere. And I know what you're thinking. In a sword fight, it's generally better if you can see your opponents. Especially when they're the ones that want to escape. So obviously, they do exactly what you'd expect. Laura! They escape with a Laura. They're the ones with horses. If your enemies are trying to kidnap people and you're trying to stop them, don't lob a smoke bomb so that they have cover to do it. What was even your plan here? Even if you use the smoke to untie Laura, where do you think you're going? You only had one option, to win the fight. Don't give me that look. You must have known what was going to happen when you did it. Oh, I can't believe they took her. I got her. What did you think was going to happen? Seriously. So they decide to chase after the horseman. And to do that, they put Willow in a wagon. Because wagons that are pulled by horses are renowned for being faster than horses. If we catch them by sundown, we can get her back. How are you going to catch them by sundown when they're on horses and you're in a cart? I know there's a story of the tortoise and the hare, but you're taking things a bit far, don't you think? So they send off the scouts ahead. What, is it so that they can catch them and harass them and slow them down so the wagon has a chance to catch up? No, no it isn't. I don't even know why they're going off ahead. Infected. Poison? Possession. How do you know that? At this point, you're taking the I'm a soft person that can't do anything, but also really intelligent trope a bit far. One of the gales must have touched one of them with a staff. You definitely can't know that. Largely, because if you know that a guy turned up with a magic staff that can possess people, why after the fight didn't you go, hey, we need to make sure I know what's possessed by that guy, especially the guy that was in a fight with him and has a shoulder wound from his staff. Here's a clue. You can't make someone look intelligent when the knowledge wasn't applied when it was more useful earlier on. Valentine, I pinned him down. Turned him. Yeah, he was walking around with a big shoulder wound. We all saw it. We were all there. All of us. Is the real Valentine still in there? And if he is, Willie, you please stand up. Bad magic is corrosive. It eats away at you until there's nothing left. I'm sorry, Graydon. When did you become High Aldwin? I'm sorry, Willow. When did you become an arsehole? Why does it matter if he's High Aldwin? That's a title that your people within your colony give each other. It carries no weight to anyone else in the entire world, but also... Why does it matter what his title is? It only matters if the information he's giving is correct. This just reeks of you shouldn't listen to someone who's giving you information unless they have the title of expert. No, I don't care what his title is. I only care if what he's saying is true. And it is. So why are we having a go at him? I know, that's right, you're not. Willow, I think you're spending too much time around Kit. You're picking up her mannerisms. I am. At this point, I would take his horse and piss off, leaving him in the cart alone. But instead, we get this blank expression from the latte. 
Yeah, look down, mate. That'll teach him that you're not to be trifled with. So everyone's riding away. There's lots of suspiciously similar deja vu screenshots of scenery again. And it's time for epic travel music. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> I mean, I like the music, but they always play it over the most monotonous scenes. You're faster than this. I blew it. It's all right, dude. That's what I'd assumed. My father calls me an embarrassment to the name of Hester, and he's, he's right. Well, tell him it wasn't a particularly illustrious name to start with. I'm not sure that's the compliment you were intending. My father always says I don't live up to the name. Yeah, and your name was really low anyway, so to actually come underneath that bar is particularly impressive, actually. You called yourself crap, and he said you were even worse than you thought you were. <laughs> but somehow, the cart catches up with the horse riders that they sent on in advance. They stop chasing Alora, the most important person in the universe, because they saw a cloud. Seriously, if you think that's bad, come to the UK sometime, you'll die of shock. Stars align, doors open, sphere turns, the gods awoken. Yeah, if you thought the script was bad before, now you've got them rhyming. <laughs> you think we can nail the basic plot concepts first before we start writing poems? Extinguish the flame, snuff out the light, and exile the child to the 13th night. Okay, I mean, it was worth a try. But Willow explains that they're not going to kill Alora, because if they did, then her soul would carry on and she could be reincarnated and still defeat the sorceress. So they have to imprison her soul so they can keep her captured forever and she won't come back. This is what happened to the evil sorceress at the end of the first movie, and as you can see, this imprisonment is it's very effective. If you can do this from prison, I'd suggest shipping them to somewhere a bit more high security. But we cut back to the soldiers carrying Alora, and she comes around and grabs one of their swords. I thought they would have planned for that one, no. She uses the sword to cut her bonds, and falls to the ground, deciding to run into the forest. Now, it would be stupid if a little girl could outrun horses, and then even if she does hit the forest, they could just chase after her, and they'd definitely catch her because she's a little girl running through a forest. But who cares about sanity when she easily makes it to the forest beating the horses, who just pull up outside the forest and sit there rather than chasing her. Meanwhile, back at the Six Stooges, they've lost a wheel on their wagon. So you just leave the wagon behind and go on the horses? I mean, two of you are little mini people. I'm sure you can fit. I think it's broken. That's why we bring you on the trip, mate. Your deep insight. I can mend it. Yeah, but why do you want to mend it? It's just a wagon, dude. It slows you down. It's not useful. But he asks if Willow can pick up the wagon so he can put the horse in. He's like, no. I don't know, maybe he thinks such menial tasks are beneath him. If we let her, the crone will use this storm to separate and weaken us. We have to stay together. So we know they're definitely not going to stay together in the rest of the episode. Otherwise, why would you put that line in? It's just that now, in the future, when they do separate, we'll know that they're idiots. Although this is episode three, I think everyone's already realized by this point. So Kit and Kit 2 go to get water. She says if we catch up to them, they're demonic. If we have to kill them, we do. We can't hesitate. I didn't hesitate. I was trying to save you. I don't even know which bit she's referring to. Maybe the stab of justice that happened. Because if that was it, no, she didn't hesitate. She immediately slashed him across the chest. I don't need saving, Jane. Oh my god, I can't believe you like the damsel in distress. No, you can't. You can't, Kit. Yeah, this is what counts for a twist and a plot arc in modern entertainment. Every time we spar, I beat you. <sighs> what? You're saying... You let me win. Yep. She thought she was amazing, realizes that she may not be as amazing as she thinks because somebody was actually leading her on. But in the future, she will go forth and meet a challenge that will tell her, actually, no, you were amazing this entire time, even when you thought you weren't. Oh, I can't wait for that. It's modern storytelling at its finest. Why would you do that? Because, Kit, your mother- Oh, yeah. Uh, there is that bit as well. Your mother told me to get close to you, so you know. <laughs> I got really close to you. This is basically what I put in my episode 2 review that they should have done with Alora. You know, get her a load of friends that could protect her. But the Queen thought I should do that with my daughter, but not the most important person in the universe. Alora doesn't need a bodyguard. I don't know, maybe if she had one, she wouldn't have got kidnapped repeatedly. Only really in the beginning, then I did it because I, I liked it. I never thought that you would be fighting for your life. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but if I was a great sword fighter and I was training with someone else, I'd be training them how to improve. <laughs> it doesn't really matter why you're training with them. They should improve now naturally over time anyway. Why would you have two different training styles? The training for people that won't have to use it and the training for people that do. Doesn't make any sense. Oh, these are those safe sword moves that nobody ever uses because they're awful. <laughs> you make it seem like you deliberately trained her to be crap so that you always would be better than her. But while they've been away, they fixed the wagon. They can feel my groin. Don't say groin in mixed company. Why? You do realize everyone's got a groin, right? <laughs> Don't say arms either. It's offensive. So Alora's running through the dark woods. She's completely lost and has no idea where she's going or why at this point, but as she's stumbling through the fog and the darkness, she magically comes across a cabin in the woods. Not only is that incredibly coincidental, but it's also ominous. So you're probably thinking, there's something weird about these two. This must be like dark magic or Hansel and Gretel. Whatever it is, it's definitely some kind of trap. Especially when in this universe, not only do you have female blacksmiths, you also have female lumberjacks. Two of them. And they're a couple. 
I mean, this just sounds like an incredibly common and likely scenario. It's not like every coincidence just keeps compounding and making this seem more and more ridiculous as time goes on at all. Hey, and three traveler, let's do come fist upon our modest repast. But they're actually really friendly, which makes them come across even creepier when you think this is Hansel and Gretel. Oh no, just come into our house. Yes, why don't you just eat the gingerbread? It'll be fine. Though we are but humble woods women, what's ours is yours. Yeah, I'd trust that. I certainly wouldn't immediately turn around and run in a different direction. I think I'll stay here. What could possibly go wrong? Help me, please. Yep. Now show vulnerability to the two lunatics in the woods. That could only go well for you. Gather from your dishevelment. Gone and got yourself a bit turned around out here in the uncultivated territories. I think she means you need a wash, love. See, they just don't teach young people situational awareness anymore. Yeah, they're really making it seem like she's a threat. How can you not know the danger that you're in walking into our camp? But that's not even what she means. This entire scene is bizarre. What may we ask is your appellation? What? What's your name, love? But she tells them that her name is Alora, even though she only found that out like a day ago. And, be and before that, for the rest of her life, she had an entirely different name. No, I'm going to use my new one. But she's like, oh, you must have been named after the real one. Put her in this bear hug. Everything's coming across as incredibly creepy. There are men coming for me. Yeah, that's right. She keeps warning these people that if you stay here, you're going to die. Men are coming for me. And when they find me, they'll find you and then you won't be living anymore. This is repeated time and time again. If you stay here, you're going to die. You need to move. Oh, we do not doubt that. They don't take it seriously, though, at any point. I don't know what they're going to do to you, but it won't be pleasant. Now, there's foreshadowing and telling people the same piece of advice so often, it becomes predictable, obvious, and you make them look like idiots when they don't listen to you. So pack a bag and let's get moving. We very quickly reach that point in this scene. Because she doesn't care. Anyone comes in here, I'll deal with him. I definitely won't die, despite the fact that you keep telling me I'm going to die. Back with the six stooges, and they're arguing about directions. Willow's second in command wants to go one way, and Borman is very, very interested in going another one. Sure not for self-interest at all. But it turns out he wants to go the other way because there's an inn that he wants to visit. And I, I mean, Kit realises that he wants her to go with him. How about the other way? It's a voluptuous veil. I mean, th that does sound nicer. Everything in this world is just named that way. We've got Death Dogs, Death Alley, Death Inn, and Voluptuous Veil. I don't know which one we should go past. No, it doesn't. It does too. No, it doesn't. I will cut you. Hey. Still one of my favourite characters. <laughs> he just goes from zero to a hundred real quick. But Willow has a premonition of a Laura, and with eyes like that, she's having a really bad time. Or a really great one. A really great one. What? What's wrong? I'm fine. Yeah, it's not as if they need to know your visions of the future, or that that fight might make them stop arguing about where we need to go, so we can just make a decision and speed up a bit. No. Keep that to yourself, mate. It'll be fine. We'll split up. We'll cover more ground. Yeah, split up. It's fine. There's no problems with that at all. Despite the fact that five minutes ago, you literally said that the crone was going to use the storm to split you up. And if you do, then all will be lost. Five minutes later, you're like, oh yeah, let's just, let's just split up. Not because of the crone and her weather, but because we're just doing it by choice for absolutely no reason whatsoever. It's fine. It's fine. Turn your brain off. It'll be fine. So most of them go one way and boring Kit to go the other way to the inn. Don't let anything happen to my queen. Okay then. I'd rather die a thousand deaths than fail you. Borman, also one of my favorite characters. I really want this guy to have a character arc where he turns into a man. So this section is basically thumbnail gold. Thumbnail gold. But Alora just starts telling the random two people that she met in the dark, dangerous woods that actually know I'm the real Alora and I'm coming to save the world. As they're biting into just big chunks of flesh, which definitely aren't the last person that sat on that seat, I'm sure. At this point, I was just assuming these two were a couple of hobbits. So to prove it, they want to see the mark on her arm. And the moment they do, their entire attitude changes and they don't want to eat her anymore. It's probably a lucky escape, let's be honest. It's really you, isn't it? Do you think? How do you not know? It's really you, isn't it? I don't know if I'm me, I might be someone else. What is this script? Oh, I think we've tarried too long. We must depart this spooky forest at once. So of course, the moment they realise she's a Laura and people are after her, like, yeah, we need to go now because the people that come to you, they're definitely going to kill us like you kept telling us repeatedly. And that means only one thing. We will fight at your side and faithfully serve you from now until our last. Anyone else get the impression that that's not going to be for a long time? And we are obligated to protect it and if need be, die for it. I have a feeling he can help with that. I've just spent the last five minutes repeatedly telling you that if a guy turns up, you're going to die. And now a guy's turned up. You'll never guess what happens. Trust me, mom. You do not want to go down that road. I mean, at least he warned her. So they fight. And in just a few hits, she gets the upper hand. That's got a sting, doesn't it? Unfortunately for her, this isn't just any normal man. He's been possessed by evil dark magic, which would have been nice for her to know if Alora had actually told any of them. So she's so pleased with herself. Ha ha, I won. Until that happens. Yeah, that's got a sting as well. Probably a bit more. So that's that one gone. The event happening after the foreshadowing of just repeatedly smashing it into your face until you eventually got the message that 
this show thinks you're thick. So they run off. For some reason around the hut, everything was all nice and brightly lit. And then the moment you leave the hut, we're back into the deep darkness of a forest again. If you get the impression that none of these sets or environments link together in any cohesive way, I'd agree with you. So they just run in a random direction of 360 degrees out of the forest. So it's very unlucky then that there's just a soldier on foot waiting for them in the exact place they run to. How did he know where they were going when they didn't know where they were going? But either way, he captures them and Lumberjack number two runs. And yes, I'm calling her Lumberjack number two because I'd never even bothered to learn her name. She doesn't actually say anything throughout the entire show. Was this like someone's mom or something that they just wanted to give a part and she couldn't act so they just had to remain silent? I don't know. So she runs. Alora begs for a life. Please just let her go. Please, I'll come with you. Just don't hurt her. Don't think that one's on the cards, love. Because for a show so deeply entrenched in messaging, the next bit is glorious. You're responsible. I wonder if you can see where this is going already. Your arrogance and defiance got them killed. Countless more will die, but you can still save them. All you have to do is submit. And I'll always love you. <laughs> I don't know, I just get a certain sort of vibe from this, that that's someone's ex-partner or daddy issues. <laughs> well, he told me to submit and I was like, no, I'm strong and empowered. But Dom and Dom are traveling and they start to discuss her father again. I don't know why we can't just have all this in one conversation. I was the young, handsome, heroic one. He was my uh, slightly shorter comedic foil. Sounds like you're just describing this show, mate, to be honest. We don't think of the characters as people with their own personalities. No, everyone is just a stereotype, which you can describe in two words. Well, Willow's the comedic foil. Why did you come back and he didn't? There's no such thing as fake. Hey, you get lucky or you get dead. I got lucky. I notice you're not actually answering any of these questions. Tell her how he died. Tell her how you escaped. Did you leave him under a rock somewhere and you ran out? I don't know. If I was her, I'd just kind of care a bit more. So you actually saw him? No, he didn't see him die. So, you know, we've always left the door open for in the future, maybe bringing him back, possibly. I don't know. I mean, it's a step up from Deadbeat Dad, I guess, but we're not really doing the character justice right now, are we? Especially considering he's one of the fan favorites of the movie. You know, the QS isn't a weapon. No. You're telling me that a piece of armor isn't a weapon? It's actually a defensive item? <gasps> Say it isn't so. I thought he took it off and beat people around the head with it. It's a shield. Against what? Darkness. So you're saying it glows. Come on, dude. You're supposed to be fighting a sorceress and what you've invented is a glorified torch. Maybe I'm just not so easily pleased as you are. Perhaps if you'd gone into detail about how the cuirass allowed him to fight off 2,000 people, rather than realizing you couldn't come up with a reason, then maybe people would have been more intrigued by the story. But Dom, Dumber, and Dumbest are now stuck in the wagon in the mud. Never saw that coming. Perhaps we should just be riding horses. They can walk. They have a discussion about how Willow isn't helping them get it out of the mud. So for a sorcerer, not actually doing much magic. And that probably means he can't anymore. Maybe there's a reason he moved the no one underground. Maybe he can't protect them anymore. He couldn't protect them at any point. I think we proved that when a queen took the piss out of him for his disappearing pig trick. I'm also not sure living in a cave is that great protection in the wilds. If they really wanted protection, they should have just dug tunnels of their own height so no one else could fit. That's the best idea. Can a sorcerer lose his mojo? I mean, it happened to Austin Powers, if that helps. Then again, he got his back, so there's still hope. So now we cut to one of the most ridiculous scenes of the entire thing. Maybe I'm too cynical, but I just don't think them pulling is going to help that much. Especially when in the distance, you've got a horse that could pull it. Attach the second horse to the cart so you double your horsepower. Especially when the horse you've got tied to the wagon isn't even pulling it. But Willow's complaining because he's getting old. I just don't have as much energy as I did before. Before I'd have all the energy in the world, whereas now I need to conserve it. Because otherwise, if I use it up, I won't be able to get it back. It's the most blunt way of explaining the previous conversation I've heard. And the thing is, it's done in two conversations. It would have been far better just to get them to ask him. And so he sort of confided in them. It's like, I trust you. No, instead, we're just going to cut to a random person who just happens to be answering the question that was just asked. Coincidences on top of coincidences. Boo hoo. You're breaking my heart over here. I told you I liked him. <laughs> Nobody cares about your feelings. When I was young, resilient, I could take the punishment. But now I have to be careful, preserve my strength for... For what? For when it gets worse. Someone give that man an Oscar, because I have a feeling he's not going to stop until he gets one. How could it possibly get any worse? Oh, you had to say it, didn't you? You learn nothing. It can, and it will. Trust me. The only reason I trust you is because with acting that bad, I think I'd know if you were lying. And I can't let my emotions impel me to waste my magic. If I do, I won't have enough left to fight when we get to... To where? I mean, I need to start doing that for dra... Matic pauses. Feels totally natural when you do it, not all forced. But he has another vision of a tower. I know where they're going. That was lucky. <laughs> you feel like that a lot in this series. But the couple find the inn. It's a 
graveyard. Hey, what can I say? I'm as disappointed as you are. Yeah, I know the feeling I wanted to drink after watching this show as well. I can imagine how bad it was starring in it. What happened to the slaughtered lamb? Must have gone out of business. To be fair, our Woolworths look much the same now. Has anything you said been true? How dare you? At least one third of everything I've said has been true. Yeah, so now you can't really believe anything, including all the stuff he said about her father, him being lucky, him not leaving him, him knowing he's dead. Basically, all of the important information that you've gathered over the last three episodes, just forget it. It was all a waste of time. This is why having an untrustworthy narrator is, uh, not great for a TV series. Because now, you kind of have to forget everything you know about the character, and every piece of information he's ever given anyone. Congratulations. I'm such an idiot. Yeah, but to be fair, that's not really a revelation to anyone. No, you're not. You're just, you're very young. She's a young idiot, but she wants to walk back. He's like, no, 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 actually, I, I needed you. I needed you. Let's, let's go down and investigate the cellar, which I promise will be useful to you. Despite the fact that I've already lied to you repeatedly, I, I promise I'm not lying this time, even though it's in for my own interest. And then she believes that. Idiot looking pretty accurate at this point. So they enter a dark cave. Might be the first time she's ever explored a dark cave with a man, and there's his snake. But they come to a room where in the center of it looks like a sort of well. In fact, it's definitely a well because he drops a bucket down it before climbing in himself. I'm not going down there. Of course not. I need you to stay here and pull me up. How's she gonna do that? He just dropped a bucket over the edge with a rope on it. There's not even like a pulley system over the top to provide your extra leverage. He's like five times the size and weight that she is. So please, pray tell. How is her upper body strength going to lift you up? At least if it was the other way around, that'd be believable. Okay, look out for the wear rats. That's always the nice thing to say just as you do this. What? See ya. He's broke his legs. He jumps down a well, apparently doesn't injure himself at all, on the massive drop, which I'm assuming, oh, it's at the bottom of a well and warns her of we're at. If she dies, there's no one to pull you back up, and you'll die as well, so maybe give her a bit more information. Seems important to me. What are we're at? I mean, the clue's in the name. Have you not met this show? Death Dogs, Death Dealers, the Valley of Easy Traveling, the Voluptuous Valley. Um, exactly what they sound like? Thank you. I would have preferred it to be a bit more insulting, but she does still need to pull you back up, so it was probably for the best. Back to the evil people, I should probably be a bit more specific, the demonic evil people, and they've magically turned up at the same place and found their horses. And I know what you're thinking. They were ahead of these people. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I can only assume that them going through the forest slowed them down so much. But ours. The wagon lost a wheel. They were slower in the wagon to begin with. And somehow her just running into a forest for a bit slowed you down that much? Yeah, okay, whatever. Just turn your brain off. It'll be fine. A trap? Why would they leave their horses out in the open? How do you think they knew they were ahead of you? That's the better question. I don't know. Why? They wouldn't be. Huh? It doesn't matter. I don't know why we have to humiliate all our characters if they're really thick and stupid. It's like, yeah, when the audience is listening to you, they think you're really thick and stupid for writing it in the first place. If you write all your characters as if you've got two IQ, I'm not going to assume you're doing it deliberately. I'm going to assume that's your standard. I'm going to assume that's your level. But he says, if we go up that path through the mountain, we can go home. Which is weird if the path that they need to go up is exactly at the place where this inn is. When the only reason they split off in the first place is because Borman wanted to go to this inn and that wasn't on the other path. So it'd be really stupid if the other party turned up at Borman's Inn, despite the fact that they went on a different route which didn't even go past Borman's Inn, right? You're not going home. You're gonna die. Look at yourselves. You're a mess. I mean, someone needs to give you a mirror, love. You're not looking your best either. We've all been traveling across country. Give people a break. I didn't make the journey myself, but just watching this show makes me feel like I did. You're not meant to survive this. Don't worry, I get that feeling myself. I mean, that would explain why you wrote something this awful, I tell you. But just about to run up the mountain, uh, she decides this all of a sudden. Change my mind. I decline. I'm not even sure you can do that. Don't know if you're aware of your surroundings and just how many people you're facing, but, but you don't seem to have much leverage right now. You are going up that path. Yeah, it doesn't look like she's got any other choice. Unless, of course, the show's going to write in some random magic stuff just for absolutely no reason that nobody knows about. That'd be stupid. Make me. That should be easily done, but the soldier approaches her. She decides to touch his cheek, and I have no idea why she did that, but... Yeah, it kind of stings him and burns him and he runs off screaming. I'm magic and can just defeat all my enemies even though I don't know what I'm doing. You stupid cankers. I'm the greatest sorcerer there ever was. You've spent too long around Kit if you're going to go around with that ego. So she tries to do a big magic spell to defeat them and obviously it fails because she doesn't know any magic. So they start laughing, although I'm not sure why, because they still can't touch her without her burning them to death. But just then... <laughs> Yeah, he gets smacked in the face with a rock. Oh look, it's the original crew, who somehow ended up at the tavern. Despite the fact that the tavern was on an entirely different path, which is the only reason that Borman wanted to go that direction.
direction in the first place. You had two people going off in two different directions. One went this way specifically to end up at this point, and the other one went to go to a different point and somehow ended up over here. I'm more annoyed at your lack of geography than I am at all the script writing. Get away from her, silly nitties! Solid insult. That ought to put them in their place. There are times where Willow's funny, but it's always when he's insulting them in a deadpan way. I just want more of that, please. Please let me help you. But obviously, her pleading with the demonically possessed person who's kidnapped the most important person of the universe doesn't really come to much avail, and they have a fight. I'm surprised his helmet comes with, like, free guitar music. If that's the noise he makes when he pulls it down, what happens when he lifts it? Ta-da! <laughs> But like any scene in Willow, just when it's building up to something that you might actually be interested in, like a fight or an action or an interesting piece of story, uh, we cut to somebody else who's doing nothing. Did you find it yet? He's a man, it takes him longer to find it. He's not grown up with one like you did. No, not yet. That's high with an echo like that, makes you wonder where his head is. But he's pulling rocks out of walls, reaches in to grab something, and he finds what I thought was a rolled up map, but it's actually the Luminous Victoria or whatever it was. The key to the armor. Did he hide it because he's not worthy of the armor? Who knows? Or did he steal the key and the father kept the armor? Maybe the armor's only useful down a certain lineage and so he needs her because she's worthy of it or something? I tell you. If she becomes worthy of that armor, after how much of an insufferable cow she's been this series, there's gonna be a rant, put it that way, there's gonna be a rant. I can't believe I let you sucker me into something so ridiculous. It's what? Laura Dannon? Those two sentences don't even meet to each other, we're not even talking about the same thing. No, she's talking about you, and then you're going, what, this entirely unrelated person that no one's even talking about? I understand. People are like, Willow's awful, and it is, but... There's a minimum level of a script which you actually have to achieve before I'd even classify it as possible entertainment, and we're not even there. You don't even have the people in your script talking to each other. But at that point, I, I mean, she hears something. He says, look, I don't think it's down here, I haven't found anything, just pull me up. Because, you know, the tiny little girl is definitely gonna have the strength to pull up a massive six foot tall man. I think there is this thing that is looking at me. She says, there's this thing looking at me. It's a weirat, dude. It's a two headed weirat. What were you expecting? He did warn you. Is it a weirat? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. What else do you think it could be? Okay, in that case, don't pull me up. There's one weirat, so don't pull me up because you're gonna need to fight it because it's gonna attack you. Should probably remember that in the future because the show doesn't. So the rear attacks her. Like, no, it really just goes for the throat. And I didn't think it was that big before until you actually see it in relation to her. Mind you, she is very tiny, which is fine. As long as she doesn't go and pull up a six foot tall man. But she stabs it with a sword. We're all fine. It's dead. As the red light fades from its eyes. Of course, then she sees a whole lot more of them. With one of them, I couldn't pull Borman up because it was going to attack and I needed to defend myself. So when there's loads of them, I definitely can't pull him up because they're all going to attack me and I'm really going to need to defend myself. The logic here is impeccable. I'm sure they can't get that wrong. Foreman. Yeah. So I'm going to need you to come up now. Yeah, how's he going to do that? You're going to pull him up while they attack you and you just ignore them. You're going to start pulling him up and they're just going to sit there staring at you while you do it. I can't wait to see how you pull this off because you've painted yourself into a logical corner that doesn't make any sense. How on earth are you going to get out of this one? Oh, we're just going to cut to another scene where we're in a fight. Just as everything gets good and the tension starts to build, we'll cut to somebody else. Who cares? Nobody wanted answers to that anyway, did they? So we have a fight. Midget guy's going ham with his little daggers. Come on. That's right. He swaps his little daggers for an ever so slightly larger dagger. Come on. We cut back to Dumb and Dumber now, and I haven't cut any of this. This is literally the next image. Somehow, the little tiny girl managed to pull up the big hulking massive dude, and the were rats are still in the same place they haven't attacked, they just let her do it. I mean, the one on its own was aggressive enough to attack her, but you know, when predators gather together in groups, they're always more timid than they are when they're alone. That, that makes total sense. I can completely understand this. What happened here is they wrote themselves into a corner, couldn't think of a way out of it, and so just cut somewhere else and came back and magically fixed it. It's the laziest of script writing. It really is. So they just run out and the weird rats let them. They just don't want to attack anymore. Did your budget not stretch to more than one monster at a time? I, I don't know. The best we get is this scene where the moment they run, all of the red eyes, and there's a huge horde of them, Start chasing them. We didn't chase them when we could catch them, but the moment we're never gonna catch them. Run! So the fight continues between everyone. Daggers are going in their backs. Of course, it doesn't do anything like we saw in the forest. They're demonic. The knives don't do anything. One thing's for sure though, the people are losing. They're all getting knocked on their back, desperately fighting for their lives because we can't do anything to these people. They're invincible. A load of rocks fall down on top of her because we need a way of actually keeping her out of the fight without stabbing her. She doesn't like getting stabbed. Borman comes in to try and save the day. Latte is trying to save the damsel in distress by 
engaging in a huge manly virtue of running away. No, love, I'm doing it for you. I need to protect you. Run, love, what if they kill us? The levels of testosterone on display here are absolutely incredible. And they run away to Willow, who still hasn't done anything. This isn't a fight we can win. Then do something. Do magic. It comes to something when the sorcerer in your party needs to be reminded to do magic, doesn't it? We need to get everyone in the wagon. What's the wagon going to do? It's really slow. They can walk after you. To Giles, a million wax. Wow, I've got a load of wax in there. It'll be amazing and definitely protect us all. There should be enough to repel them if we can just get everyone to stop yes. fighting. Why do you need everyone to stop fighting and get in the wagon? How are they going to stop fighting? They're engaged in a fight. They can't just stop and walk off. None of this makes any sense. But of course, the script has now given itself a way out. There's a weapon that could finish the fight in the wagon. And that means only one thing. Get back in the wagon. We have to destroy the wagon. We've spent so much on this episode focusing on them just being in the wagon, even though they all should have been on horses. And then we're just gonna, you know, turn it into a fireball. It's fine. Turn your brain off. It'll be fine. It's fine. Second thoughts, keep fighting. Well, I'm glad we did all that for the rest of the episode just to build up to that one punchline. That was worth it. So his second in command is still there fighting people way bigger than himself. Still one of my favorite characters. We have the queen and the stable hand fighting two on one in perfect unison. They've trained for this moment because when you're those two, you really need to get your timing down. Rhythm is important and they've nailed it. Have you ever considered taking up synchronized swimming? I think it might be a forte, a lot more than sword fighting. <laughs> But again, they're still losing because this is literally a fight they can't win. They're invincible and people start to get knocked down all over the place. Just as the little guy's about to get attacked, Latte comes in and decides to use his entire body weight to knock another guy to the ground. Oh, no! That's a really complex sword fighting move. You've mastered there, mate. Stable girl jumps in and starts protecting the princess because as we all know, she can't fight. She just thinks she can. Although she too loses the fight and gets knocked on the ground. We're all going to die. He's having trouble breathing. The little dude jumps on his back because, you know, <laughs> stereotypes and all and starts doing what he does best, using a little tiny butter knife to as much effect as it can ever have. Which, of course, isn't that much in this scenario. Ah! No! Looking a little bit worse for wear there. So having seen what looks like his friend getting killed, Willow finally decides, actually, I should probably do something because otherwise everyone's gonna die. I could have done this a long time ago and saved my friend, but no, I thought we should at least wait for one of them to pop the clogs. So just as everyone else is about to get stabbed, Willow finally does something. It just keeps blasting them with magic and it radiates out and burns them all to a crisp, proving that he is a sorcerer after all, although it exhausts him and he ends up basically unable to move. Would have been nice if you'd done that before your friend got killed, no? Or if you're like, oh, well now I'm drained. Yes, but now you don't have enemies to fight. It could have saved everyone a lot of time if you'd just done this in the beginning. You probably would have recovered by now if you had done it at the beginning of the episode. So we get a scene where he's like, I can heal you, I can heal you, and then doesn't heal him. <laughs> Go with your magic. Yeah, it's only me. Don't bother healing me. I'll just stay over here and die. It's not an honorable thing to do when the threat has already passed. You're just doing it for no reason now. And it actually makes him evil if he doesn't do it. And I died doing what I was supposed to. Protecting my best friend. Latte was your best friend? Because I thought it was Willow, but Willow was perfectly safe. You were protecting Latte. What happened behind closed doors? Because I never saw that bond between the two of you. So he passes on because Willow couldn't be bothered to heal him, even though he said he could. This guy apologizes and becomes his old self. I guess the demon just leaves when the body actually gets destroyed. And he tells her what we already know. Elora Dunham must be protected and taken to the city, which is where everyone was going anyway. This has been said so many times, I don't know why we needed a dying man to confirm it all. Do it. <laughs> It has to be you. I don't know why it has to be her. There's plenty of people with swords. A lot of them care a lot less about you. Actually seems cruel to make her do it, to be honest. I'm so proud of you, Jay. Then get somebody else to do it. I'm so proud of you. Now cut my head off. <laughs> get Kit to do it. She wouldn't give a damn. You never cared about anyone but herself. No. Please, release me. This is nothing short of cruel to make her do it. My final act on Earth will be to scar my adopted daughter for the rest of her life. Writers of this really know how to write a family relationship, don't they? So with that, she just stands up and does it. And she does it in the most horrific way possible. Overhead swing into his face. I mean, of all the brutal ways you could have done it, I didn't think you'd choose this one. I don't think you could have made that more horrifying if you tried. There's got to be a nicer way of doing it than an overhead swing into his face. Luckily, though, when he falls, there's no damage to his head at all. Probably shouldn't have shown us this camera angle straight afterwards, should you? So they decide to go up the mountain because otherwise this pass is going to flood with the rain. Those steps? No, but we can't go that way. Well, now you can do magic. You want to fly us out of here? No? Well, then I'm going up the big scary steps. 
I think I'm left with Bowman as my favourite character now. You already killed off one of the good people. There's not many left. Just checking in though. Still got four arrows. It turns out the reason why she only brought four of them is because she's never gonna use them in a fight. Like ever. But Latte collapses because, you know, he had to exert himself for the first time in his entire life. Bad magic. Yeah, it turns out he's got infected by the same stuff that infects the soldiers by the looks of it. Which is okay though, because if he turns evil, what's he gonna do? Complain at them for a bit. It's not exactly the soldier the other ones were. <laughs> and Willow leaves by announcing that we're in Nokmar. Which doesn't mean anything to the audience, so it really isn't the cliffhanger you were expecting. We're in Nokmar. Where's that? Ec roll credits, everybody! If no one knows what that means. Nobody cares when you tell them about it. But that's basically most of the show. This show is like a collection of cliches, and it's so weird. We keep reminding everything of people we already know, and then nothing makes sense. Time and space don't match. We go in different routes and end up in the same place. We set up an incredibly creepy couple in the forest who then turn out to be good. The show writes itself into so many corners that don't make sense, and then rather than solving their way out of the problem, or changing it if they can't think of a way out, we just cut to another scene every time. And my favourite part of the episode is where he's leading out into this guy walked out in a field of battle and fought and defeated 2,000 people. And we literally get Kit going, yeah, but nobody cares about that. Nobody wants to know about that. And I'm thinking, yeah, I do. I do. It's the most interesting thing of your show. And you cut away from it. Every time we get to anything of interest, we leave. And I think it's because the writers know their level. They know that actually this is awful. And if I go any further, I'm just going to show everyone how awful of a writer I am. So let's just ignore that and go and talk about this over here. To me, it's the most mask-off script writing thing, and I do think that Willow will lead into an incredible disaster. Because if they can't even make the journey across the world make any sense, then how are they going to wrap this up? How are they going to have a battle with a wizard and evil? and some kind of massive castle attack by the looks of it make any sense. I don't think they can do it, but I can't wait to see the disaster that comes from it. For me, I can find two things entertaining. Something that's really good or really bad. I actually find the mediocre stuff to be the worst because it's just kind of boring and exists. You put it on a second monitor and that's it. But Willow is thoroughly in the so truly awful I can't wait to see what disaster happened next kind of territory. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.